This book was like the last season of Game of Thrones. A hot mess. I kid you not, my mind was just can't find the perfect knife to cut your pork chops. The servants are not paying attention to you. My condolences. Life must be very, very difficult. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ishi, and today I will be talking about all of the books I read during the month of September. I am really excited because I read some great books that I have lots of opinions about, and I'm very excited to share all of those opinions with you all today. Jumping right into it, the first book I want to talk about is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, and Wow. This book is basically about the end of the world as the people know it. The world has entered into this fifth season, which is like the worst season ever, very destructive, very terrible, and everyone is very afraid. I don't even know where to start. I need to read the next book immediately. This book was so good. I am speechless and my mind is blown. This book was very different from everything I expected it to be and it was also very different from all the other fantasy books I have read in the past and it was just so different, so refreshing and I just loved it so much. This book had one of the most unique magic systems I have ever read about and it fascinated me so much. Another thing I found super interesting was that one third of this book was from second person point of view and at first I was very hesitant about really trying to get into that point of view because it just felt very different and odd but the more I read through that second person point of view the more I came to love it. It really helped distinguish that one point of view from the others and it was just so interesting. I really love that this book had that. We come across a few different perspectives but mostly there are three main ones and at the end, when these three main point of views come together, I kid you not, my mind was just like, I could not believe. I could not believe. <laughs> I'm speechless. I loved all of these characters and I cannot wait to see what's in store for them in the next couple books. I also really loved the politics of this world. It was super interesting. I loved all the characters. I loved how they all interacted with one another. I loved everything five out of five stars. The next book I'll talk about is Moribito Guardian of the Darkness. I loved, loved, loved this book. This is the second book in the series after Moribito Guardian of the Spirit. In the first book we follow Balsa who is hired as a bodyguard for a prince. In the second book the prince is safe and Balsa is kind of free to go off on her own now so she decides to visit her homeland. And once she gets there, she discovers this whole plot, this whole conspiracy going on, and it's just very interesting and very engaging. Even though we meet completely new characters and follow a completely different plot, this book still feels like a perfect continuation of the first book. I loved all of the different characters we meet, and I loved reading from their perspective. I also loved the mythological aspect of this book, and I liked how it all tied the story together. The first book takes place in the nation of New Yogo. In in this book, Balsa goes back to her homeland of Kanbal, so in this book we explore the mythology of Kanbal. I really liked how the author did this without discrediting one or the other. They were both given equal importance and I really like that. And this series is just so amazing. If you have not read it yet, please read it. It's just so good. The whole secret plot and conspiracy is really fun to read about. I really enjoyed this book. This is definitely one of the best series I have started this year five out of five stars to this I just really really want more people to read this book and if you don't want to read it there is also an anime and also a TV show based on this book it's just so good just get into the story please so good. The next book I'll talk about is The Beast Player, which is by the same author who wrote the Moribito series. I also really like this book, except I did not like it as much as the Moribito series. Still, I really liked it. This was a very slow, quiet, and meandering book. I found it very different from the type of books I usually read. The plot wasn't super speedy. It unfolded kind of slowly and steadily over the course of the entire book. At times, I did feel like it was a bit too slow. 
but I did overall enjoy the slower pace. Our main character is this girl named Elin, and her family is in charge of taking care of these water serpents that make up their nation's army. One day, all of these serpents are found dead, and her mother is blamed for it, so her mother is executed, and Elin basically ends up having to run away, so she ends up in this other nation. As she grows up in this other nation, she learns that she has the power to communicate not only with those water serpents, Serpents, but with also these bird-like creatures called royal beasts who guard the queen. I really liked Elaine. We follow her from when she is 10 to when she is about 20 years old. She is a very smart kid and I really liked seeing her grow over the course of this book. The changes in her character are so subtle that it almost seems like she didn't really change at all. But looking back, you can kind of see how she changed. Imagine the people you're really close to, for example. You don't really notice people you're close to change that much, but in hindsight, you can kind of see how different they are from before. That's how Elin made me feel like, because there's this kid that you read about when she was a kid, and now she's all grown up and you didn't even notice it happened, which is why it made me feel very nostalgic, and I just think that her character and her growth was really beautiful. There were times, however, when I felt like her character was a bit too perfect. I think that maybe she should have faced a few more conflicts and failures along the way. There were also times when Elin came across a hurdle and she just explained herself and just explained her way through it. So it did seem a bit unrealistic to me that she got away with that way too many times. The politics and the conflicts in this book were also really interesting to me. There were certain characters in here that got my blood boiling. This book also brings up a very important moral and ethical issue. These royal beasts that Elin cares for are basically kidnapped from the wild and then raised in captivity and they are trained in certain ways and they are fed certain things that they wouldn't really come across in the wild and these royal beasts that are bred in captivity are very different from their counterparts that are out in the wild so Elin has this whole dilemma about the morality of it. The ending was interesting because I felt like the plot didn't really end instead the end of this book happened at the end of Elin's character arc instead of at the end of the plot, if that makes sense. Overall, I found this book to be very atmospheric and beautiful and I really liked it. I gave it four stars. The next book I'll talk about is Vagabond. This book follows Takezo and Matahachi, who are the only two soldiers left alive at the end of a battle, and they're basically trying to figure out what to do and where to go from there. Matahachi decides that he doesn't really want to go back to their home village, so Takezo goes back and he basically goes back to tell Matahachi's family that hey he's still alive he just doesn't want to come back but when he goes back to this village there are people after him trying to capture him and kill him and I just could not for the life of me figure out why they were after him so I kind of did not enjoy that part of the book that much because I did not know what was happening. I did not know why all these people were after him. I loved the art style though and I love Takizo. He is my favorite character. Basically, Takizo's goal is to become the strongest and the best fighter under the sun. And that's all great and all, but I feel like that could have been developed a bit more. Like, yes, he wants to be invincible, but why does he want to be invincible? Why does he want to be the best? What motivates him? I would have loved if this book went into his character and his backstory a bit more so that we know all this about him instead of him just having this lofty goal about becoming the best. This graphic novel is a retelling of another novel and I have not read that one, so I don't know how well this represents that. So my review and my opinions are based solely on this. Overall, I did really enjoy this and I gave it four stars. If you do plan on reading it though, just be aware that this book is relatively gruesome and graphic. Basically, all Takezo does throughout the entirety of this book is fight. So proceed with caution. And if you want proper content warnings, just let me know and I'll let you know. The next book I'll talk about is Winter of the Witch, which is the last book in the Winter Night trilogy. This book is kind of historical fiction, kind of fantasy, and is loosely based on Russian 
Russian folklore, I think. In this last book, our main character Vasya is in charge of bringing together the non-magical world and the magical world, and there's this big battle at the end. I think that this is my favorite book in this trilogy. I thought it was really well done. The plot was fun, though I did think it was a bit jumpy and disjointed at times. I liked all the characters and I enjoyed seeing how they changed over the course of the trilogy. I loved that there was more folklore and fantasy in this book. I really missed that in the second book. Also, I hated Constantine in the last two books and even at the beginning of this book, but by the end of this book, I actually liked him a little, which shocked me. I really like the fact that this book gave us the opportunity to get to know the villains better and to really kind of understand where they are coming from because I love morally gray characters. I loved reading about them. I also loved the dynamic between Morosco and the bear. I decided to give this book four stars and there are a couple reasons why I did not give it five stars. I'll have to get into the spoilers to explain myself so Spoiler warning. Like I said, the magic in this book was really interesting to read about and I was very glad that Vasya finally learned how to use this magic, but I think that she mastered the whole thing a bit too quickly. The first time she did it, she was in a bit of a life or death situation, so I understand that it just happened, but then I didn't understand how she completely got a hold on it without any kind of training and I did not like that. I think that she should have undergone training before she went into that final battle. Also, the relationship between Morosco and Vasya sped up a bit too quickly for my taste. I mean, I know he's hot, but like he's old and Vasya is 17, so I would have I would have liked if that did not happen too quickly. I also did not appreciate that everyone just called Vasya ugly all the time but was awed by her anyway. Like we're told again and again that she's ugly and she looks like a frog and her eyes are too far apart. Like we get it. You don't need to repeat it that much. I did not appreciate how many times we got told that Vasya looked like a frog. Like, I understand. I love books with characters who are unattractive or books with characters who are unconventionally attractive, but I think Vasya and the way her appearance is explained is a bit overdone. I think it could have been done better. Overall though, I really did like this book and like I said, I gave it four stars. The next book I'll talk about is Kingdom of the Wicked. I have lots of conflicting opinions about this book. Overall, I did enjoy it but I think that this book could have been much more than it was. I think that this book should have been much more based on what the premise promised. It just did not fulfill all of my expectations for it. Let's get some things out of the way. Wrath is hot. The cover is amazing. The audiobook is exceptional. With those things out of the way, let's move on to some things that did not quite make sense to me and really made me enjoy this book less than I could have. First of all, why are the devil's horns called the horns of Hades? The devil is not Hades. And in a plot that is very much influenced by Christianity, how does Hades even factor into the picture? I don't understand. Another thing was the setting. At first, I thought this book might be set in modern day, but then the fashion made me think that maybe this book took place in older times. Still, the way the characters talk was very modern to me. Maybe it was mentioned and I just missed it. I don't know. Next, let's talk about Wrath. I liked the idea of Wrath, like a powerful and handsome prince of hell. Yes, please. But. This is literally wrath, general of war, personification of vengeance, anger, and violence. How in the world did he stand there and put up with Amelia whinging for the entirety of this book? Sorry, but I found it hard to believe. Amelia was so irritating. I did not like her at all, and I did not like reading through her perspective. I get that she liked cooking and she did magic through cooking or whatever, but maybe I did not want to read paragraph after paragraph about Scampi. Also, she is literally a witch and she is taught about the wicked from when she was very small, but she finds it hard to believe that the wicked actually exist. And she thinks that witches exist, but werewolves and vampires can't. Also, after a while, I think this book got too repetitive, so I couldn't really enjoy it because I knew what was gonna happen. Basically, Amelia meets a Prince of Hell. He offers her some deal. 
she's like, hmm, I'll think about it. And then she thinks about it for like two seconds. And then she's like, you know what? No. And then this happens like five more times. It was very predictable and I was also able to predict who the murderer was. So overall this book had lots of potential, it just did not do it for me. The next book is also one I have lots of opinions about. Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book in the Stormlight Archive and whew, I really liked The Way of Kings. I loved Words of Radiance. And this book almost, almost fooled me into liking it too. This book was like the last season of Game of Thrones. A hot mess. In the last book, I actually liked Dalinar. So at first I was kind of excited to get to know him more. But the more I read about him, the more boring he became. And I just ended up hating him by the end. There was this entire chapter. He didn't have any utensils, so he's looking around for someone to give him a knife so he can cut his pork chops, but no one is looking his way, and he doesn't know where to get a knife, so he goes outside in the storm, and then he comes back, and it's it's this whole mess, and I don't care about Dalinar, I don't care about his pork chops, I don't care about his soup, he just infuriated me beyond belief. Can't find the perfect knife to cut your pork chops? The servants are not paying attention to you? My condolences. Life must be very, very difficult. Next, Kaladin, one of my most favorite characters ever, was did so dirty by this book. He's barely even in it. In my humble opinion, Kaladin is like the main character. You can't just push him off to the side and ignore him for the entirety of the book. The audacity. I would have loved to see more chapters from his point of view. I also would have loved to see more of Bridge Four and Adolin and Renarin, but they're all barely even in this book. Next is Shallan. She seems to be growing exponentially more and more annoying with every book. I already didn't like her in the first book. She was entitled, privileged, and really irritating. In the second book, she grew even more irritating. And in this book, she was unbelievably irritating. I also did not like Yasna. She also really irritated me. I also did not care about Venli, who for some reason had way too many chapters in her point of view than she should have had. So overall, the majority of this book was boring and focused way too much on characters that I did not care about which is why I ended up giving it two stars. The last book I'll talk about is Dark and Shallow Lies. First, some positive things. The title, the cover, the blurb, the first couple chapters were all very amazing. I loved the beginning, I liked the ending. There was just a lot of muddle in the middle. Our main character is Grey and her best friend Elora goes missing and is presumed dead and there's this whole mystery and everyone is trying to figure out what happened to her. In this group of friends is Hart. I hated him from the very beginning. He was very annoying and also very abusive and toxic, but his character is romanticized for some reason because Grey is like basically in love with him and I did not like that at all. And this is a bit of a spoiler, but Hart and Elora had this like dating thing going on, but they're also step siblings. I just did not enjoy the whole dynamic. There is this another boy named Zale. I loved him. He was my favorite character and I have nothing bad to say about him, but the way Grey acted around Zale was just very wishy-washy and I did not enjoy it. I didn't like Grey as a main character. She wasn't very proactive at all. She didn't go out and do things. Things just kind of happened and she happened to be in the middle of them, which I don't enjoy enjoy much in books. And even though this is supposed to be like a whole mystery, she never really figures anything out because everything just kind of figures itself out and the people basically just tell her what she needs to know. There is this other guy named Case. I found him to be a fascinating character and I would have loved to get to know him more, except he doesn't really show up much in the book. I would have loved if this book focused on some of the other people in that group of friends instead of just Grey and Hart. Overall, it was okay, but it's definitely not one of my favorites. I ended up giving it two stars. Those are all of the books I read in September. Overall, this was a very good reading month for me because I read more books than I have in the past and also one of those books was like a thousand two hundred pages so 
really good reading month for me. I feel like I might have had a few unpopular opinions here, so let me know if you agree or disagree. That is all from me today. Please like and subscribe if you want. My name is Ishi. Thanks so much for spending time with me, and I hope your day is as wonderful as you are.